Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome back. It is week three of Lit 2000. And um, you're going to be getting a grade back this week on your first major paper. Um, maybe not as big of a deal as some of the upcoming ones, but uh, certainly <clears throat> a kickoff to all the writing that we're going to be doing for Lit 2000. So one of the things I want to show you in this weekly walkthrough is how to access your feedback on those assignments because it is going to be really important. Um, we don't really have do-overs in this class, but the whole goal is to take the feedback from the first paper and apply it to the second and then to the third and so on and so forth. So overall improvement as we go through the semester is what we're is what we're aiming at. So um, you're going to get a score, of course. You're going to get a score on the rubric. So you're going to be able to see where your grade was broken down. And you're going to be able to uh, access my feedback. And I'm going to show you how to do that. All right. So let's take a look at what's going on this week as well. Because, of course, that is going to be important too. Got too many windows open here. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Now we're cooking. All right, so as I mentioned, we are starting week number three, um, which means that we're going to be getting into poetry, everybody's favorite. Um, I'm going to actually turn off, I don't think I did a schedule, did I? I'm going to turn off the um, student view for just a second because uh, I want to go to the syllabus first. I always forget about that. Um the schedule, of course, is at the end of the syllabus. And if you ever feel lost, please check here. Um, every all the due dates, all the stuff that you need to be doing are, you know, everything is listed on this class calendar. So in this particular week, we're going to be beginning the poetry unit and you will have a discussion board due. So that's what the work is for this week. Next week, you will have a test over poetry and like terminology and things like that. And then the week after that, you will have the poetry paper. And we're going to pretty much follow that rule as we go through the various different types of literature. Um, so for those of you who love poetry, we're starting a fun three weeks. For those of you who don't love poetry, I'm sorry. But the good news is we will get it out of the way quickly. All right. So that's, that's our, uh, that's our, that's our hope. That's our battle cry for people who struggle a little bit with poetry. So before I show you about how to access your grades, let's go ahead and take a look at the poetry beginning unit. So week three, our overview and objectives, of course, you'll want to read these, nothing to do about them, but this is going to give you an overview of what's happening. Um, so we are, as we know, delving into poetry. Um, but I want you to think about poetry, not just the way we see it on a page, but how we access it a lot. We often listen to poetry in musical form. Um, some songwriters are more talented poets than others, but that's a way that we uh, can relate to poetry because it is something most of us listen to a lot. In week three, our objectives, of course, are to define the formal elements of poetry, use strategies to help uh, read poetry effectively, and write your discussion post, as I mentioned, sharing thoughts on a specific poem. For the learning materials this week, in addition to, of course, this video, which is going to be posted in the announcements, you have a set of readings, including a um, file on reading and responding to poetry, an article on the elements of poetry, and then in our courses library guide, you're going to read the poems and the material accompanying them for this list now this there's a longer list but this is how it's i've broken it up into the, the three different weeks so psalm 23 john dunn andrew marvel john milton dylan thomas william shakespeare and edward arlington robinson are the poets and let me go ahead and open that lib guide so you can see what this looks like as you notice those are the top ones we will take pick up with walt whitman next week but um so you're gonna you're gonna start at the very top and in each one of these, you've got the poem, 
or the psalm in this case. And then you've also got links to critical analysis. So you don't necessarily have to read every single critical analysis article in depth, but you will be able to use those uh, as sources on your poetry paper or as you write about the poem for your discussion boards. So <clears throat> especially once you pick something you really want to delve into, reading those critical analyses can be very helpful. Um, some authors like John Donne, we have two poems that you're going to read. And then there's an author biography as well as those articles on critical analysis. Sometimes you may not want to read every single one of these, but sometimes you may want to at least read the overview um, type things that might help you understand the poem a little bit more. So um, don't think of this as like, you know, assigned reading that you are forced to do, but think of it as possibly being helpful in getting your mind around the poems. So there's some good stuff for that in there as well. Um, so then we end with uh, Richard Corey by Edward Arling Arlington Robinson. I can never say that name. And then, like I said, we'll pick up next week with, um, with Walt Whitman. Notice too, that when you click on the poem, it's going to take us to a place to read it. Uh, usually Poetry Foundation, this, this website is very, very helpful. Um, one of the things that's kind of cool about it, if you um, are more of an auditory person, a lot of times this will have a um, an audio about it as well. Sometimes, especially when we get into more contemporary poetry, you might even have access to the author reading the poem, which is kind of a cool, which is kind of a cool thing. Um, you also have a full MLA citation for each of these. So when you cite something, you have the ability to just copy this and paste it into your Word document or um, on the discussion board if you are citing a poem there. All right. So lots of good stuff there. And of course, the critical analysis stuff and the author biographies, those are also going to have um, citations available because they are part of the library holdings. So if I click on the overview of the flea, for example, this is maybe getting a little ahead because you're not writing a paper paper this week, but it's good to have this information and good to know that it's there and available for you. Um, so let's take a quick look there. I say quick look, but the computer is like, I don't want to go to this website, but thank you. Okay, let me try a different one. If it takes you to a library source, there's going to be an, a, an MLA citation available. Okay, so this is a good example of this. If I wanted to read this article, I need to click on the PDF full text. But if I want to cite this article, I can just go directly over here, scroll down to MLA, and there is my official MLA citation. So just wanted to point out that those are um, those are going to be available and you can use any of these things as sources on your poetry paper. Not It's coming up in a couple of weeks. Not We're not there yet, but um, that's very helpful to have those pre-made for you. There's also some videos um, to watch and there is some preparation for this week's graded assignment, um, which of course I'm gonna go over with you. Um, there are, let's say I, I just lost my, I just lost my train of thought. But anyway, this is gonna give you some additional information. So as you're going through the readings and resources, the learning materials and activities, make sure that you check all that out. And then we will have the assigned, uh, piece. So let's go over that here. You're going to choose one poem from this week's selections in Canvas. You're going to write a response to the poem in which you address the following. Who is the speaker? How do we know? How would you characterize the language in the poem? Is it formal, informal, old, contemporary? 
I always get a kick out of when people start talking about Shakespeare and Old English because Shakespeare is not Old English. Shakespeare is modern English, um, but certainly outdated uh, from what we what, from what we've evolved to. But um, does the poem have a set structure? Is there rhyme? Does there seem to be a regular rhythm? Um, and on these questions, do not just say yes or no. You need to name it. So if it's a sonnet, you want to talk about a sonnet. You want to say what a sonnet is. Um, if there's rhyme, what is the rhyme scheme? And you, in the videos, you'll be learning about how we discuss that. But uh, for example, Hickory Dickory Doc, the mouse ran up the clock. That would be A-A, right? Because Doc and clock both rhyme. And then uh, the clock struck 12, the mouse ran down Hickory Dickory Doc. So it'd be A-A-B-A -A -A if we were marking rhyme for that. Um, Anyway, you'll learn more about that in the in the content. Share any vivid images in the poem. Um, share any metaphors, similes, other figurative language. Uh, what? It, how would you describe the mood of the poem? Is it dark and brooding? Is it a, is it love? Is is it spiritual? Um, how does it relate to any themes you find? Is it about God, love, death, hate, sex? religion, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and what made you choose this poem over the others? That's always a, a an interesting thing to talk about. Um, you should divide your writing up into paragraphs. Do not just make this all one big lump. Um, how you do that is up to you, but there you go. Um, you can write your response out in essay form. Oh, or, and I, and this is going to be an option throughout on the discussion boards. If you would rather record a video, you can. Now, let me show you while we're in here, if I were going to, if I wanted to do a video, how would I accomplish that? Um, you can record video directly in your, in the box uh, by going to, I think it's this one. Yeah. Upload or record media. So let's say I wanted to record um, and I would need to. There we go. So it will allow me, hi, um, double video is so weird, uh, but it would allow me to record a video instead of writing it out. So you can do that. That is certainly okay. Um, and then, and this is something kind of fun because everybody always wants bonus points. So I am not requiring you to respond to classmates in the discussion boards, but if within a single week, you, you can't do all of these in week 14, but so this is due on Sunday, January 29th. So by Sunday, uh, February the 5th, if you, rec you respond to at least two of your classmates with good detail and, and depth, you can earn bonus points. So those are going to be just kind of tallied up as we go throughout the semester. Um, and if you miss one, not a big deal. Um, you don't have to do any of them, but if you, uh, if you do some of them, that's fine too. You don't have to do all of them to get the bonus points. All right. So final thing, when you receive a grade back and you'll notice that I'm signed in as my sample student. So it shows right here. Ooh, alert, alert, alert. I have a grade. So I'm going to go to the grade book. And, um, in order to access your feedback, you want to, there's a lot of things that you can click on here. Of course, it shows you the score. Um, this will show you the rubric, this little clipboard thing. And this will show you comments. But the best way to access your feedback is to click on the title of it. Um, so this is going to open everything for you. And it's going to say, uh, it's going to give you my comments over here. It's going to give you any visual feedback. Uh, there is, there's not going to be any visual feedback, so there shouldn't be anything there. Um, but this will show you the rubric. You can see how you scored on the rubric, and you should look at that. Um, these are just randomly given, but anything that is not in the exemplary category might be something that you want to work on. Um, and certainly, if you score in the um, needs improvement or not attempted, category in, or uh, section in any category, then this is clearly something that you need to pay special attention to. Um, if you score in the competent range, you know, you're doing well. It's not a, it's not a horrible thing. It's not a great thing, but it's, it is what it is. Um, but that also could give you areas to target. Oh, excuse me. For improvement later. All right. So 
The most important thing though, is the um, audio feedback. So let me click back once. Oops, I didn't mean to go back that far. It will tell you what you should do. So please listen to the audio feedback with a copy of your paper open on screen. If you have questions after reviewing the audio feedback and the rubric scores, please reach out via Canvas inbox. Now I'm not gonna open the paper. It wasn't a real paper. It was just the template for, uh, for MLA. But let's see how this looks. Of course, my computer is not going to load it very well. Um, while I'm waiting to see if this will load, uh, typically, student. there we go. So today we're going to be taking a look at your... Uh, literary thoughts paper and um, basically going to walk you through my thoughts as I could. Okay. I'm not going to make this play the whole thing, but what happens is when you get one of these, you, you want to have your, <laughs> excuse me, you want to have your paper open on your screen while you listen to the media comments so that you can scroll through. Um, typically I will have you scroll down to the work cited page first. We'll talk about those. Then we'll come back up and read the essay together. I do not read it to you, but I comment on basically each thing. Um, so it's going to be a mixture of, oh gosh, this whole sentence has misspellings or, oh, you've not used quotation marks where you need to, or whatever the case may be. It's going to be, it's going to give you things to work on. It's also going to give you things that, oh, this was done particularly well. So make sure you listen to the feedback and make sure you think about that feedback and be prepared to apply it to the next paper. So essentially you've got two tools. You've got the audio feedback on these formal papers and you've got the rubric scores. Now, sometimes I'll write out comments instead, but most of the time on the major papers, I like to literally walk through it with you because it makes it more um, clear what I'm talking about, like where I'm talking about. So that's how you will get your feedback. Um, on all the major papers this this term. And typically, I am I always try to have them back to you within a week. Um, this week, I didn't get a head start. Sometimes I will grade them as they come in so I can get a big chunk of them done uh, before the week actually ends. But I did not get a chance to do that. We had a lot of stuff going on this week. So, um, but you should have them back within a week. Uh, and as soon as that grade pops in, you'll be able to take a look at your feedback. If you have questions about your feedback, as it will say right there, you need to inbox me. Um, that is the way to ask questions about a personal grade. So there you go. All right, everybody. I hope you have a great week three. And um, I'm sure I'll touch base in the middle of the week. But in the meantime, uh, know that I will be back next Monday or yeah, next Monday uh, for week number four. Everyone have a good one and I will talk to you soon.